now I feel really terrible. That's one bad thing about being mean. You should. You're sick of your And then when you realize you're mean, you're like, I, I, that's terrible. I don't want to be mean. It's just, there's just a sinister amount of fun in it. That it's such a temptation. Y'all know you are my friends, though, right? And not like Jesus said. Jesus said, you're my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. <laughs> There's probably some preachers that <laughs> condition their friendship that way, too. <laughs> uh, no, really. Uh, I, just, I, I just almost daily thank God for the people I get to pastor. And that's true. I am always just... You know, other preachers, whenever I have visiting pastors or missionaries that come to our church, other preachers say, you know, I just love, I just love the people in your church. They're just wonderful. You know, and, or maybe I tell them that. that I love them. Anyway, we all agree about it. And it, I, I just, that's the way I feel. I just, when I am somewhere else, I always enjoy traveling on occasion and getting to go to a church where I just sit down and hear preaching. That's, that's refreshing. It's helpful. But the whole time I'm there, I honestly am thinking, man, I wish I were in our church because, uh, because of the people, because of the people we have. And that's the real truth about it. And so, hopefully, you'll let me be your friend in heaven. Romans chapter 1. Romans? That's what I meant to say. That's what we heard. Well, some of the, there's some of the same letters. R. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> M, M is a stretch. <laughs> Bear with me. It's Sunday night. Yeah. Thanks. Are you there? Verse 4. I'm sorry, Pastor. Uh, what did you say? Proverbs 1 4. Thank you. I thought you were about to apologize for something mean you did to me, but. <laughs> she said, I'm sorry, Pastor. Like, oh, here it comes. Just don't tell everybody that mean thing she did this week. <laughs> You're not sorry. Verse 4. I'm sorry for my stupid heart, yes. <laughs> Proverbs. Verse 4. Proverbs 1 4. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Let's ask God's help. Father, tonight as we're in Proverbs and as we are looking at what it means to be simple, I pray that you would put the fear of the Lord in us and that our response from having the fear of the Lord would be that we would be afraid to be simple and that we would seek after wisdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now some of Proverbs is more than pithy, wise sayings. I have to be careful saying more than some of Proverbs carries some chapters carry a theme where they aren't standalone mm -hmm. verses. And actually chapter one is that way. And we looked at it a couple of weeks ago in our introduction to Proverbs. Uh, and I don't want to spend a lot of time this evening on review, but last week we looked at the fear of the Lord. We looked at all the things that the fear of the Lord is. And one of the things that we pointed out right away because that's one of the things that's lacking. You know, uh, the older you get, the more you really want to use the term the problem with people these days or the trouble with kids these days. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody here ever have old geezers around you that would use the dry kids these days, the trouble with kids these days kind of thing? And uh, I tend to, I think more, I, you know, I'm just such a sarcastic personality. I tend to want to use phrases like that just because I'm sort of imitating older people, but I'm getting to, you know, have more heart to the sayings the older I get. And the problem with kids these days uh, is that there's no fear of the Lord. The problem with adults these days is there's no fear of the Lord. The with, problem with seniors these days is that there's no fear of the Lord. No fear of the Lord. The problem with, with people that aren't saved is that there's no fear of the Lord. The problem with Christians is that there's no fear of the Lord. Amen. It actually is the problem today. There's a major problem today with people not being afraid of God. 
And we saw last week the consequences of having a fear of God. And one of the benefits of having a fear of God is that if you fear God, you don't fear man. Sometimes people think being, having a fear of the Lord means you're mousy or timid or afraid of your shadow. But actually, the fear of the Lord simply means that you fear God and nothing else. It makes a huge difference. Amen. And if you weren't here last Sunday evening, uh, just preaching what the Bible says, just going through that, the study that we did, would be worth your time. And so that's probably online or probably will be online at some time. And the answer I give everybody, ask Tony. I don't know. Uh, but it, it should be up sometime. But you, you, you need to listen to that message because I do believe that there's a key in us and the key is that we're not afraid of God. It's interesting. You can prove... You can prove, using the Word of God, that something is sin, and people have a debate about how they're going to respond to it. That's true. And people are, oh, you're right, it is, that's wrong. And then they have to decide what they're going to do. Hmm. You know, I've had in my ministry a few times, I should say a lot of times, but a few notable times, when I've had the privilege of, of pastoring people that are, well, I guess that's what i got to do kind of people. Hmm. Remember one teenager that I had, he would bring me questions. He'd say, Pastor Price. And he would ask me the question. And I'd show him what the Bible said. He'd say, well, I guess that's what i got to do then. I mean, it was just like that. There's another guy, he never responded when he'd ask a question. He'd never say anything. The next thing you know, he was just acting on whatever he said, whatever the Bible said. Once he knew what the Bible said, there was no decision to make. And that's one of the benefits of the fear of the Lord. We know we'd live with a lot less uncertainty if we just had fear of the Lord. Because yeah. things just come down to, I'm, I fear God. Yeah. Joseph didn't have to decide. He didn't have to say, well, you know what, I, I need to just weigh this out and see whether or not the risk is worth the reward. Hmm. He said, how can I do this thing that's sin against God? Good. Fear of the Lord. Good. And all through Proverbs, that phrase, the fear of the Lord, it's not only in Proverbs, but all through Proverbs, that phrase, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. It's incredible how the fear of the Lord is one of the building blocks. It is the step. You know, I think of it like a ramp. You know, you put a ramp up to a door, and if you're trying to get into the, into the house, and the house is, is wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the ramp to get into the house. You'll never be wise until you fear God. So, Scripture's really plain about that, and that's real help for us. The other thing that Proverbs, another theme, we're going to see some themes that Proverbs really hits hard. Lord willing, if I'm able to do so next Sunday evening, uh, if, if I'm able to preach next Sunday night, I'll be preaching about what Proverbs says about finances. And it'll be a real help to you if you'll come. We'll just be looking at Proverbs, biblical finances. I had a uh, when I was in college, I worked for a guy that had been a lifelong friend, but I worked for a Christian man in, as a mechanic in a repair shop. And he used to just talk about Proverbs and Ecclesiastes too, but Proverbs all day long. And one of the things he testified was that he started at a certain point in his life to manage his business based on the book of Proverbs. Everything the Bible said in Proverbs about people and about interacting with people and everything is said about finances, he started doing And let me just tell you something. It worked. God's way works. And he was always saying, Proverbs, I ran my business according to Proverbs, and I did this. So if I'm here next Sunday evening, that's what I'll be preaching. He said, Pastor, what do you mean if you'll be here? I think I might die this week, actually. <laughs> I, saw, I saw somebody looking at me when I said, I'm going to get new friends in heaven. And they looked at me like, you're going to get there really soon. <laughs> no, not really. Um, Seriously, uh, my, my grandmother's husband passed away yesterday. I might have the funerals this coming Saturday, and he put in his will that he wants me to do his funeral. He didn't put anything else about me in his will. But he put, <laughs> he put why am I like this on Sunday nights? It's terrible. Uh, but he put in his will that he wanted me to do his funeral, my cousin and I. And so I, I may do that, so I may not be able to preach this next Sunday evening. We'll just see. Uh, I... I half and half right now logistically. I don't know if it can happen or not. So, anyway, but if I'm here next Sunday night, that'll be the message. But another theme that's in Proverbs is this theme of simple. 
there's another, another, another word that comes up a lot of times, the word fool. But being simple and being a fool is not always the same, and so we'll look at those separately and individually. Um, Solomon's intent in writing Proverbs to his son, he said in verse 4, is to give subtlety to the simple. Now one thing about a simple person is that they're not subtle. And so the whole point of what Solomon is subtly saying is that you can have a guy that's not, you know, they say the sharpest tool in the shed. His elevator doesn't go all the way to the front. He's a few shy, fries short of a happy meal. You know, he could go on and on. Uh, but what's that? Cornbread is done through. His cornbread isn't done all the way through? Cornbread's not done in the middle? Yeah, that kind of thing. And you'd never know it. And you'd never know it because he studied the Word of God and he understood principles in Proverbs. And I have met people, honestly, with not great IQs. Then it took me a long time to figure out they didn't have a great IQ. And then when I would question them about things, they, sometimes they would say things or do things that were brilliant. And I'd say, where'd you get that? How'd you know that? And they'd say, well, Proverbs, such and so. Hmm. Anytime you think I'm brilliant. <laughs> Don't worry, it probably won't happen. <laughs> The fact is, is that if you take the truths, the principles that are in Proverbs, and you apply them, you can be simple, and yet you'll be subtle. And you just, to be that, could we agree, you wouldn't be simple anymore? In other words, you can compensate for something that wasn't naturally a given. You don't you think God would be glorified in that? Sure would. God's <clears throat> oftentimes glorified when His strength is shown through our weakness. Amen. Okay, so uh, I think it's verse 24. Let's see here. Uh, 22, verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge? In case you're wondering, some of the topics we'll cover. Simple, scorner, fool. But tonight's simple. Solomon's indictment against the simple is that you like being that way. You love it. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. It's a choice. Simplicity is a choice. You say, Pastor, I was born that way. Or, you know, I just come from a bunch of simple people. That's just the way we are. And I'm not talking about worldly wise here. I'm talking about biblically wise. And there's a difference. Innocence is not simplicity. Paul said in Romans, that's why the, I had Romans in the back of my mind earlier, but in Romans 16, he said, I would have you to be wise concerning good and simple concerning evil. And that's a misquote. Close enough. In other words, there are things that we could seem to be simple about, and God wants that kind of simplicity. Listen, if you're innocent about perverse terms, or practices, or things that people do, and you don't have a reason to know those things, and somebody, you know, that's not humor. To laugh at somebody because they don't know something wicked. It's not funny that somebody is simple about evil. That's good. You'll never fall into a sin you're ignorant of. And simplicity is ignorance. But see, the wrong kind of simplicity is being ignorant of things you ought to be wise to. And a Christian ought to be wise concerning good and simple concerning evil. And Solomon asked the simple, he said, they asked the simple question, how, asked the simple question, how long will you love simplicity? Now this is wisdom that's personified in this verse. Wisdom is asking this question, why, what's wrong with me? Why don't you want me? Why don't you desire me? Go down to the last uh, two verses, verse 32. 
For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Now again, this is personified wisdom speaking. And personified wisdom says that it is the turning away of the simple that will slay them, them being the pronoun that is the precedent of is, or the antecedent of is simple. So simple turning away from what? From wisdom. The simple turning away from wisdom. You ever felt bad? You ever felt bad for a dumb guy with bad friends? <laughs> or a dumb girl? With bad friends, I feel. I, I honestly, my wife and I, we, you know, we use the old Alabama phrase, "Bless their heart." <laughs> no, we don't really use that phrase, but I'm making fun of Angela, and so it just fit. You know, bless their heart. That cornbread isn't done all the way in the middle. Yeah. Is that how it goes? Not really. Kind of. Yeah, kind of like that. Anyway, you know, bless their heart it means they're simple. I think is what it, it means. But honestly, it breaks my heart to see a person who's simple that doesn't have good friends. We use a, a term a lot of times to describe, uh, it, it, you know, when you're ministering to, to people, you use the term follower to describe simple people. A follower is a simple person. See, if you can get a follower in the right crowd, they're going to do the right thing with everybody else. And you get a follower in the wrong crowd, he'll be the one standing there holding the bag when the bank gets robbed. Yep. He'll be the guy that's sitting in the getaway car and gets busted. The simple guy. Mm -hmm. And the reason he's there is because he's following. Yes, hey, yes, doing good, let's do it, man. Doing bad, let's do it. <laughs> that's simple. Simple. You know, you ought to know why your friends are your friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And be able to support it with, the, you know, and this is because of what the Bible says. Yep. Amen. And if not, you're simple. Why are you, why are you guys friends? Well, huh. well, I guess we just always been. <laughs> you can't get in trouble in a friendship like that. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you ought to know why your friends are your friends. Otherwise, you're simple. Mm. You see the definitions for simplicity? Yeah. They turn away from wisdom. Okay? Well, that's chapter 1. And you see in the first chapter, in the introductory chapter of Proverbs, before Solomon gets to saying these are the things that are wise and these are the things that are foolish and this is how to have wisdom, he begins by really identifying what wisdom isn't. And wisdom is not a person who is simple. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. In this passage, Solomon dis describes a young man who goes into a woman of the night. Verse 7, it says, And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. I just want to go down to verse 24 and look at what he didn't understand. Hearken unto me now therefore, ye children, to attend to the words of my mouth, let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. This is the woman, the, the woman of the night. And uh, the person that gets caught up in that. The Bible describes as simple. Simple. Yeah. Discern, beheld among the simple ones. Sometimes simple is used not in so much of a derogatory term. It's used uh, to describe young, just untaught, not wise ones. You know, you don't want kids to know too much about this sort of thing, but you want them to know enough about it to know that her house is the way to hell, yep. going down to the chambers of death. Um, another place... In Proverbs, talking about the same thing, talks about the reproach of uh, the adulterous relationship or a relationship with the adulterous woman. And it talks about her husband. And 
And it says, Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So is, uh, let's see. Uh, so is he that goeth into a strange woman? Yeah, so is he that goeth into whosoever touched there shall not be innocent. But it talks about her husband. And it says, uh, He will not rest content, you know, though thou givest many gifts. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, the bottom line is, I've seen this, and man, I've, I have had the privilege of getting in the middle of a broken relationship and being able to counsel and help those things to be mended. But one of the things that I've experienced many times is that a husband who's been wronged in that way, 20 years later, he might flip out and try to kill that guy. Hmm. Just seen it. You just, you just don't, hmm. you just don't go there. And you think that you can play around with adultery, hmm. and it's not dangerous. You might not get, you might not get killed. Hmm. Or you may might not be, yeah, it's no big deal, that guy's whatever. I'm just telling you, you're a fool. You're, you're simple. Mm -hmm. And you know, I wish, I wish some people that have fallen <clears throat> had read Proverbs about this matter. Mm. They wouldn't be so simple. They wouldn't think that somehow it'd work out. Somehow it'd get away with them. Somehow it wouldn't destroy them. And so simple, simple in this context. Chapter 8. This is again wisdom personified. She's crying out. She's standing at the top of high places. She's, uh, by the way, in the place of the past. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in of the doors. And here's what she says. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. How long, verse 5, or O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. So here we see an encouragement then a person who may be simple or a person who may be foolish can actually learn wisdom. Yes, sir. So simplicity, being called simple, it's not just an insult. It's not a, well, you know, no hope for you. You're simple. Well, actually, simple is something that I think is where we kind of start out. Mm -hmm. Many of us kind of begin there. Mm -hmm. But it's something that you can move from to wisdom. But you've got to listen to her. By the way, wisdom's crying without. She's out crying. She's not hiding from you. I know that the Proverbs talks about seeking wisdom, seeking her as silver and searching for her as for hid treasures but, and, and so forth. Uh, you, you can search out wisdom. But the fact of the matter is that as far as the simple and the fools are concerned, wisdom is saying, I'm over here! Right here. Listen up. You know, wisdom, young people, oftentimes is any person that loves God and comes to you with a warning. Mm -hmm. Just want to warn you about this. Just want to let you know something here. Man, I'll tell you. Bless wisdom crying without. I don't her voice in the gates chief places of concourse. She's out there and she's in the main streets and she's saying, listen to me. Man, if you've got somebody trying to warn you, it's probably wisdom. Eh, not always. You have to know what the Bible says. You have to compare what someone says with what the Scripture says. Mm -hmm. But it's probably wisdom. Chapter 9, she's personified. Wisdom hath built her house. She hewn out her seven pillars. She hath mingled her beasts. She hath killed uh, she had killed her beast and yeah, mingled those beasts. She hath, uh, uh, I want to say she had killed her wine, but no, she hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the simple, of the city. Whoso, you got to just forgive me. I, I'm pretty simple Sunday evenings. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. Got a house for you. Got the house of wisdom. You're simple. Come on in. Come on in. I set the table. I've killed the roast beast. I've mingled the wine. All this stuff. It's right here. Come on. It's an open invitation. It's an open invitation. Come on in. That's, what's, that's what wisdom does. Do you see a theme? Recurring theme. Simplicity is a choice. Simplicity is a choice which is made in the face of the voice of wisdom. Hmm. Just 
rejection of wisdom. You say, Pastor, that's foolish. Well, that's the next step from simplicity. Verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. And again, here she is. This is that passage. Born of, uh, another passage about a, a woman of the night. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith unto him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Man, before we saw that she's cast down many wounded and many strong men have been slain by her. She takes them down. There's evil in the world. There's evil out there. There are individuals. You know, I... I'm not as much of a cynic as people think I am. I don't just see bad in everything. I really don't. Matter of fact, my wife tells me sometimes, you know what, you just you give too much benefit of the doubt sometimes. And it's really true. You gotta know that people aren't just dumb. Some people are evil. Mm -hmm. It's not just dumb. They want to destroy you. Yes. And there are people that are out to destroy Christians. Yes. You think Satan doesn't have any workers? You think Satan's workers, you know, really have a fork tail and a, and a pitchfork and, and they cackle when they talk? No, they're subtle in their wickedness. Yes, sir. And they really want to destroy you. Yes. And it's on purpose. It isn't accidental. Amen. And it isn't, you know, oftentimes we feel bad for the people that are in those wicked, in, in those wicked things. And we, 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 we relate a lot, a lot of times, to the abuse and the things that have happened to them. But you know, some people are wicked. They want to be wicked. Mm -hmm. And they want to overthrow righteousness. Their father is the devil and they acknowledge him as their father. And you're simple if you think that isn't so. Yeah. You think this is just, this is just poor old guy, bless his heart. No. Not just simple, my friend. Evil. Mm -hmm. And a simple person doesn't think anything's really bad. I say, you know, I mean, they, you know, not, not that bad. It's not that, they're not that bad. Yes, they are. Evil's evil. Hmm. Verse 16. Who's so simple? So she's simple, and she destroys the simple. Now go down to, uh, go down, if you would, with me to chapter 14. <clears throat> simple play with every word. Now, for you folks that I was about to make a blonde joke. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to tell any vision jokes either in 2020. All right. <laughs> Proverbs 14, verse 15. The simple believe with every word. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. Now, this isn't the person that goes around calling everybody a liar. Ever met the person they don't believe anybody? And you know the adage, don't you? person that can't trust anybody, can't trust anybody because they're not trustworthy themselves, or a, a person who always thinks everybody's lying is lying themselves, that sort of thing. And, and there's some, there is some truth behind that. Did you ever just bought, you know, you bought the farm, so to speak, you, you just, you didn't foresee the evil and hide yourself, uh, that sort of thing. Um, well, I, think, I think we have. The simple, the simple believe with every word, and you just just believe everything that somebody says. One of the best ways to get somebody to believe a lie is if you can find somebody that believes it to tell it. That's why we have multi multi level marketing. Oh. <laughs> yep. That was mean, wasn't? Boy, I am just I'm terrible tonight. That was mean, right? Alexis from hell. Yeah. I just always feel terrible when one of my friends on social media starts doing the selling something, you know, the multi-level thing. Because I just know, like, oh, I'm going to lose a friend. Not because I'm going to unfriend them, but because I'm not serious. If you're a Facebook friend, just know this. My Facebook account's not Pastor Price account. It's not Pastor Price counsels people with biblical wisdom. My Facebook account, account is just for shenanigans. That's all it's for. It's for trolling people, taunting people, um, 
whatever. And so if you're my Facebook friend, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And so I just think, oh no, I'm going to say something. I just know I am. I can't help it with the essential oil people. I can't ask help asking them what the difference between that and vaping is. I just, I'm like, you know, you, you, you guys are all vaping, and I just don't know if that, you know, the FDA hasn't vetted that whole thing, and I just don't know if that's a good thing. I can't help it. That's just, I, I'm terrible about it. Or, the, you know, the, the Monat, I hate to say this, you know, the, the greasy hair thing. I, always, I like to ask, how much you get for that olive oil? How much you sell that for? Is that the real olive oil, the stuff made in California, or is it the fake imported stuff from Italy? What is it? You know, uh, the grease you put in your hair, whatever it is. And see, see what I'm talking about? So, the multi level marketing. But I want to tell you something. Man, there are some people that are believers, and they can sell it. They can sell it. I'm not calling them simple. I'm saying that if you buy it, <laughs> not the MLM, whatever, that, that, that's not really my point this evening, although Renee is going to take that one. And just be like, you know, Pastor said. <laughs> but the, the, the deal is, though, that somebody tries to sell you something, just because they believe it doesn't mean it's true. There are Christians that believe things. Yes, sir. It's not true. That's right. They believe things about God, and it undermines the gospel. Right. Amen. They, they believe things about the Bible, and it undermines the authority of the Scripture. And it's just not true. Mm -hmm. And just because they believe it, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you are taken in, you're simple. That's what it's saying. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. <laughs> simple inherit folly. Folly would be the act of foolishness. And that's to simple's inheritance. And the prudent, though, they're not that way. They're crowned with knowledge. So, if you're careful, simple is a person that's really not careful. That's the contrast here. And you inherit just a mess. Worse than what you've done. It just It's one of those exponential things. The Bible says the prudent, the prudent, are crowned with knowledge. It's one of those things where, it reminds me, there are a lot of principles this way, like, like James. Draw nigh to God, and He'll draw nigh to you. You want to get close to God, you'll find out God steps towards you. Take a step in His direction, and He takes a step in your direction, you get there a lot faster. Trying to get close to God. Draw nigh to God, and He'll draw nigh to you. Yeah. Be simple, you'll inherit folly. Mm. Be prudent, and you'll be crowned with knowledge. Mm -hmm. Or just get something and you realize, that's more brilliant than I am. I know I said it. <laughs> but, you know, I need to write it down, because I won't think it again. And, uh, <laughs> And I can't believe I said it, but that's I'm, I'm smart enough to know it's brilliant. <laughs> Chapter 19. The simple can be affected. Man, I hate for people to have consequences. I really do. It, it just, you know... I used to pray for protection for people from consequences. Now I'm just like, God, you know, quick as quick as possible so that it's over as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So I pray for people's consequences. You know, because God, mm -hmm. God loves His children. Smite a scorner. And the mm -hmm. simple will beware. <laughs> That's the old joke, the state trooper joke. You know, I'm talking about the farmer and his tractor. Yeah, it's, it's so recycled. You've heard it a dozen times different ways. And the farmer's out on his tractor and he's pulling his, his cattle chute and he's got one cow in it. It's his pet cow, Bessie. And truck comes by and hits him so hard, rolls him over, and he's laying on, in the ditch, and his tractor wheels off, and the cattle pen's turned over, and Bessie's laying there moaning, and he's laying there in the ditch moaning, and state trooper comes up and, and uh, asks him, 
how he's doing. And he says, I'm doing just fine. And then later on, the paramedics get there and ask if he's hurt, if he needs help. He says, yeah, I need some help. And the state trooper said, I thought you said you were fine. He said, yeah, but I saw when you went up to the cow and she wasn't fine. And you took out your pistol and shot her in the head. <laughs> okay. He said, you know, you heard that. You heard it told better, different ways, all that. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just fine. In other words, you know, smite a scorner and the simple will beware. They'll, you know, sometimes, sometimes there's got to be the guy that takes one for the team so that everybody else is warned. You know, when you deal with youth, you have to do that sometimes. It, you don't want to. You don't want that person, you know, you don't want to give somebody the harsh consequences, but you realize if he doesn't get consequences, then this one won't get, get consequences. As a parent, you, get, you know, hey, watch out being the eldest child. Don't be simple. Because you, <laughs> or don't be a scorner. You might be the one that's an example for the younger kids. Yeah. But it's one of those things where you're not getting away with that because I want everybody to know nobody's getting away with that. Right. And uh, that's just a principle. Uh, cut off the head of the snake. That's what our president did this last week mm -hmm. with the general in Iran. Everybody's all in a tizzy about this, and I have no idea how big of a problem it'll be, but my, my guess is that, you know, let's get political, this will be fun. Uh, my guess is <laughs> that uh, it's not really political, we're Americans, aren't we? Amen. No. Okay. Uh, my guess is that because the president told Iran, I've got 52 targets right now, I'm thinking the president of Iran thinks, I might be one of the targets. You smite a scorner and the simple will beware. You see, what they, the message that was sent in that <clears throat> was you mess with Americans and we're not going to kill, we're not going to kill civilians. Mm -hmm. We're taking the top. Mm -hmm. We're taking the person out at the top. Mm -hmm. So the president of Iran will be the next target. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to make the decision to go to war with the most powerful nation in the world, uh, smite a scorner uh, or smite a scorn and the simple will beware. It's just, it was just an education thing, and a lot of people don't think that way, but that's the way they think, and if you want to deal with them, that's how you have to think. So, anyway, that's my two cents on it. And um, I, I saw that in Proverbs one time, that's why I think that. <laughs> yeah, for real. Proverbs 21, verse 11. Would you, if you're president of Iran, would you take on the United States? Nope. If you're the first target? No. Israeli soldiers. You realize that Israeli soldiers they teach their they teach their lieutenants, they teach their leaders. You go into battle first and your troops follow you. Their leadership goes first. Yes. You see, that's courage. Courage isn't sending a bunch of targets out there and staying back to manage it. You don't want to mess with somebody that their top dog's coming for you and the rest of them are like you ain't getting our top dog. You know, that's there's just there's some principles there, and I think they might have found them in Proverbs. There's just some Bible principles in the Scripture about human nature and how it works, and you know people are always shocked at how things work. Remember, remember when our president was getting elected, and they said, "Oh, North Korea, you know, and Iran, and all these, just everything's going. ISIS is just going to get out of control, and all this." It turns out maybe they didn't understand. That was political. Chapter 21, verse 11. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. When the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. I had friends that were in the Gulf War. I also had friends that were in, uh, the, in the, when we invaded Iraq in 2000. Was it 2001? It was 2001. 2003. Right? That we invaded Iraq? 91 and okay. 2003, I think it was. Was it 03? Was it that line? It was, it was within a year. It was within a year of yeah. the September 11, right. 2000. Yeah, so yeah, you might be right. It's, it was the beginning of the next year, so it might have been 02. It's funny, it was so long ago, I can't remember. But I had friends in that, and they said they're just their hearts just broke for the Iraqi soldiers. So you remember they used to come out, they dropped their weapons and just run to surrender? Mm -hmm. Just run to surrender as fast as they could. Man, this is going to be good to not have to have this person that might kill me working for them to have people that actually value life and so forth. And um, a lot of principles, a lot of princi principles about that and about the scorner, the person who's a scorner. Man, I'll tell you something, you don't want to work for a scorner. 
You don't want to be behind or under a scorner. And so Proverbs 21, verse, verse 11, when the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise, and when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. You see there's a, there's a two-step program here? If a simple is made wise, then he can receive instruction and receive knowledge. But you know, there's just some people you can't teach anything to. I've tried. There, there are some people, and I do. I, I give it a good college try, especially with young people. I've had, I've taken young people in. Um, I, I have invested a lot in just different ages of people. But there's some times when I realize I can't tell you anything. I'm quicker to come to that conclusion than I used to be. But I'm pretty patient about it, actually. Uh, there are some people when they ask me counsel about things, I say, "No counsel for you, pal." You never listen. It's not, I'm not going to waste my words. You know, if I can show you from the Bible and you won't do it, you know, show me, show me some wisdom. Show me that you listen, and then I'll try to instruct you. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. When the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. You see that? You have to deal with scoffing and scorning. You have to put it in its place. You remember the the. Uh, the two complementary verses here in Proverbs. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou be like him. But then it says, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. And what Proverbs, what, what Solomon is saying is, don't answer him. Answer him for them. And I do that nowadays. Man, somebody publicly says something dumb, I answer them in public. If it's private, I'm like, you're just dumb. You know, it's, it's, it's really a help. I don't tell people they're just... Do I tell people... Have any of y'all ever been told you're just dumb? See, that's a myth. I don't tell people that. I never told you that. No, 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 no. I, I never said you're dumb. Okay. I've Sorry. told other people... You know people I've told they're dumb? Not to my top of my record. Not to the top of my record. Doesn't mean okay. that. He said it publicly, so I called him out. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday night. Let's finish up. I'm kidding. It's his main night, right? My wife's in the nursery. She's going to hear half of what I'm saying. Chapter 22, verse 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. I do not think I need to illustrate this. Do I? No. Uh, you see it coming, get out of the way. You see it coming, get out of the way. You know, there's a lot of times that people get warned, though. You know, this is what's going to happen. Get out of the way. Prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Just, uh, just like nothing's happening. Chapter 27, verse 12. Oh, did I? Hold on a second. Yeah, the same one. I just did that one. No, it's. I'm sorry. This is the same verse. I, yeah, chapter 27, verse verse. Uh, Verse 12, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself with the simple pass on and are punished. I remember this actually. This is like second grade that I memorized chapter 27 and realized I just had a cheat day. <laughs> Same verse. Um, that's all, folks. That's it. There's, just, there's nothing else in the Bible for you tonight from me. Uh, the well is dry. That's it. <laughs> and it was a long, long Sunday night anyway, so. Um, you don't have to be simple. God doesn't want you to be simple. And we have a whole book of the Bible that has specific instruction on behaviors to avoid and specific things to do and not to do that are a really great launching pad for being wise and crowned with knowledge. And so then it becomes a choice for us, doesn't it? Amen. It comes down to what am I going to do with it? Am I going to get in the Word of God? Am I going to find out what it says and then apply it? Or am I going to be simple? Because that really is... It's really that simple. 
Father, thank you for what we've learned tonight. I just ask that you increase the truth of it in our heart and our mind and our thinking. And Lord, I pray that we be resolved to know your word and to know how to avoid being simple. We pray in Jesus' name.